Hello and welcome to my session at Azure Back to School about uh, automation and integration. Today I'm gonna talk about uh, how you can uh, implement different uh, automation and integration in Azure based on uh, services that Azure provided you and also the techniques that you can use for your different scenarios. So basically, I'm going to talk about uh, four uh, important services in Azure and uh, you can use uh, these services to uh, implement different scenarios of automation, integration uh, for your environment and uh, you can implement uh, different scenarios. So first, my name is Said Dahl. I'm technical leader and senior solution architect at vSafe. Uh, I've been working on I in IT industry for about 50, 15 years. And uh, my last eight years, I spent my time for Microsoft solutions and uh, particularly in Azure. Uh, so uh, my main focus uh, is on automation and integration on Azure, hybrid cloud and uh, cloud adoption. Uh, please feel free to connect me on LinkedIn or Twitter and uh, let me know if you have any idea, any feedback from this session. So let's uh, start. What is Azure Automation? The first service that we are uh, going to check and look uh, in detail. So Azure Automation delivers uh, cloud-based uh, automation, uh, operating system updates you can have on Azure Automation and configuration service that supports uh, consistent management uh, across your Azure and also non-Azure environment. Uh, it includes process, automation, configuration management, update management, shared capab uh, capabilities, and uh, there are uh, actually different features that you can use for your environment. And this service has uh, a lot of ability, uh, abilities to be connected to uh, the other services too. So, first of all, uh, you need to create an Azure uh, automation account. But first things is when you create an Azure automation account, you will have access to different part of an Azure automation accounts that you can uh, use for different scenarios. So you will have process automation, you have uh, shared resources, DevOps environment, uh, change tracking and inventory, update management, and desired state configuration or DSC. So I'm going to uh, briefly explain each part of this uh, Azure Automation account that, and how you can use for your different scenarios. First of all, process automation. So in process automation, uh, there are three important components that you can uh, use for uh, your environment or for your automation and also integration. So the first one and uh, actually the root part is uh, Rombook. So basically Rombook is the uh, part that you can uh, implement um, your code or the flow that uh, can be run on uh, an Azure resources or uh, on um, your on-premise environment, actually. Uh, if you haven't watched my session about Azure Arc yet, uh, I highly recommended you to watch that session too and make sure that you get enough concept about Azure Arc because it's really useful for this part of the automation and also process automation. So in Rombook, you have several options to create your uh, 
automation code. You have PowerShell, you have Python, you have uh, PowerShell Flow and uh, graphical PowerShell, graphical PowerShell Flow. And uh, th the differences between uh, these uh, different uh, method to implement the uh, automation is, uh, for example, for PowerShell flow and graphical flow, uh, you have uh, this chance to implement your automation or your code without uh, uh, coding knowledge. Uh, but you have to uh, be aware that if you use a graphical uh, PowerShell or graphical PowerShell flow, uh, you have to consider that the flow uh, will run slowly, uh, especially when it, it needs to be run for uh, from the beginning. So uh, the the reason of that is the things that the code that the flow. Uh, that needs to be uh, compiled by the system from the graphical uh, to actual code. So that's why it's uh, a bit slower than the normal code. Uh, also, you have a rumble gallery. So if you want to do some general and some part of, uh, I would say, not really general. Uh, before you start uh, implementing your code, writing your code or script, uh, I recommended you to check uh, Rombok Gallery because you can find uh, a lot of uh, pre uh, codes, pre scripts that you just need to uh, update the parameters and use them for uh, for your automation. Uh, system so uh, that gallery uh, is, is is really good if you want to start uh, with some uh, general automation also uh, you have the connection of uh, your runbook to the other systems so you can uh, use a webhook uh, which is really useful when you want to uh, call an automation start the automation or let's say trigger an automation and uh, the good things about webhook is uh, you can send your parameter to your code so you can easily uh, populate the data the variable or a string uh, into into your code so it, you can you can uh, design your code based on some dynamic data also, you have this option to connect your Rombook to Logic Apps, Power Automate, or uh, Power Apps. So you can easily call or trigger your uh, Rombook uh, by that systems too. Uh, when you have the Rombook, uh, you have this option to monitor the jobs or if you want to tra uh, troubleshoot. Uh, the troubleshoot in the code is uh, basically based on the um, uh, actually the, 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 the your code. So you can, for example, if it's PowerShell, you can use uh, write dash host to get the data if you want to do some uh, troubleshoot, and you can see in the monitoring part or monitor jobs of uh, Rombook. So you can basically uh, uh, track the code and see uh, if uh, you have some uh, problem with your code. So you can you can see that actual output. Uh, the other part is a hybrid worker group. So this hyper worker group is uh, the part that you need to have some uh, concept about Azure Arc, but if I want to uh, briefly explain it to you, so if you have a server in another cloud and uh, even if you have a server in your on-premise and you want to run specific code to that environment, to that server, and it doesn't matter if it's Linux OS or if it's Windows, so you can basically uh, attach that server by Azure Arc enabled uh, server uh, to 
your Azure environment. And as soon as you uh, attach your server to the cloud, to the Azure side, uh, basically you can install the extension for the Azure automation uh, on that server, like an, uh, an Azure resource, Azure server, Azure VM. So basically you can run your code on this server in your uh, on-premise or on the other clouds. And since it does work with agent-based connection, uh, you do not need to have any inbound connection, inbound open port to your environment. And agent is responsible for that part. So you only need to have output, uh, outbound connection to, to Azure. Uh, also, uh, it's not only when you want to run specific code on a specific server. Uh, if you want to use a long run a script, why is like that? Because you have two options to run your script in the Azure. One is based on Azure Sandbox and the other is based on Azure uh, Agent Base. So uh, that part, it helps you if you have a code that it's uh, basically long run, running code. Uh, so uh, you have a fair, uh, fair part in Azure Sandbox that you cannot use uh, your code uh, to be run in a long time. So you, uh, if, if it's happened, the code will be restarted and start from the beginning and you cannot basically run your code uh, on uh, Azure Sandbox. But if you want to use a long running script, uh, you have this option to uh, actually onboard uh, or connect a VM. And in this part, it's not only related to uh, your on-premise or in uh, the other clouds, you can have a, an, a VM in Azure and you can connect it to hybrid worker group uh, based on the extension. And then when you want to run the code based on that extension, you can run the code on the actual server that you connected to uh, Azure environment, or it's it's an v, it's a VM that you have in Azure and works with uh, Azure extension. So uh, that works uh, for that kind of solution. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, basically use uh, both Windows and Linux. Uh, in this kind of scenario, but you, uh, you have to uh, be aware if you want to, for example, use PowerShell, uh, obviously you need to uh, install the dependencies uh, on that server. So one of dependency that you need to know about that uh, is related to uh, uh, the modules that you are going to use for your script. So if you have a specific PowerShell module on your script, uh, inside your script, uh, so you need to uh, have the same module on VMs that you uh, actually connected to Azure Automation based on uh, the agent. So you need to do that. You need to install that module on that server too. Uh, in what kind of scenario we should use Sandbox or in what kind of scenario we need to use a hybrid worker? As you can see in this list, uh, so uh, you, you can use Azure Sandbox if you don't have a script that uh, based on long running code and uh, it's a simple script. Uh, the, the option that you have in Azure Sandbox, it's related to uh, authentication, uh, which is simpler than uh, Azure Hybrid Worker Group because you can use uh, Azure Identity Manager uh, management in this case. And uh, also latency of uh, running the script is less than uh, Azure Hybrid Worker Group. And the reason behind that is when you have uh, the code on sandbox uh, it's it's the server it's 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 kind of serverless actually 
that uh, you are going to run the code. But for hybrid worker, uh, basically you are going to send the code on the actual server and then you need to wait for answer from the server. So it's uh, basically the process that is uh, behind the agent that you uh, installed on the server. Also, if you want to use, uh, for example, uh, some uh, elevation on your code, or if you want to use a specific module uh, that you need to install on the server, uh, or if you uh, face some limitations, as I've said, related to the code or uh, some uh, script that needs uh, some memory uh, that you want to go behind the fair uh, things that Microsoft set, set it for Azure Sandbox. So the other part is related to the shared resources. Uh, the, the, this part that you have in shared resources basically uh, helps you to have your uh, different variables or let's say uh, credential or connections uh, as a shared resources that you can use for different runbook. And it's really helpful when it comes to security part. So you just need to define the credential or connections or certification uh, one time and you can reuse them for different runbooks. So uh, it's, it's really important that you can use uh, this kind of shared resources. Uh, for example, for modules, uh, you have, uh, as I've said before, as I mentioned before, you need to install the uh, module on server to be able to use that. But also you have the uh, PowerShell uh, module gallery inside Azure Automation when you want to use Azure Sandbox. So uh, you need to install the specific module on Azure uh, Automation Sandbox 2. So you need to be able uh, to call that module or, or use that module uh, inside your code. So if you use a specific module, uh, be, you have to make sure that you have that module installed on both VM or uh, the Azure Sandbox. And it's the same for uh, Python packages. Uh, you need to have those packages. Uh, if you have some packages in your uh, code, you have to uh, install them uh, on uh, Sandbox and also the VM. Uh, so you have uh, these options to uh, share uh, these kind of resources between your runbook and your uh, environment. So, Let's jump to desired state configuration, DSC, uh, which is really cool. But if I want to explain it to you, uh, I like to explain it in another way instead of a bit technical way. So imagine that you have a roommate who is really messy. So every time that uh, he or she is doing something in your kitchen. Uh, this guy leaves the kitchen like this, and all the time when you go to when you go to kitchen, uh, your face changing to this one. So you always unhappy, you always mad on your uh, roommate, and uh, you want to do some changes. So. Basically, you are saying, okay, enough is enough and it's time to change. So what you are going to do, you are going to create some rules. You are going to create a kitchen list that uh, your roommate or others need to follow this kitchen list to make sure that the kitchen is always uh, tidy, clean and uh, is the kitchen that you are always expecting. So uh, based on that list, uh, you make sure everyone before left the kitchen, they have to follow this rule. Uh, 
uh, clean the uh, tables uh, and also make sure that everything is uh, back to the same place that they took it before. So based on this rule, your kitchen will be changed to this. Of course, this is not the kitchen that I showed from the first picture. I couldn't find a clean uh, picture of that kitchen. And I know there is no any uh, DSC or dessert state configuration for that kitchen, but never mind. You can even uh, imagine that it's the same kitchen and it's pretty clean right now, right? So that's why that we are using desired state configuration. So it's the same in the Azure. So if you have uh, some servers that you want to make sure uh, those servers are always following and uh, are in the state or uh, in the configuration that you need to have on that servers. Uh, so Desert Esther is responsible for that part. So you can create some uh, code based on the Desert Estate format, and you can uh, join machines uh, from your environment. And I'm saying that again, it doesn't matter if it's uh, inside Azure or if it's a non-Azure resource because you can always use that and you need to use an Azure Arc uh, enabled server for this scenario if it's a non-Azure um, resource. So you can use a desired state to make sure that that kind of configuration uh, configurations that you are looking for are always uh, push to the server and you have different uh, scenario to check that for example you can monitor that configurations are available on server or you can apply the updates so uh, it helps a lot that you can make sure everything uh, is on play, uh, in place and uh, you have uh, the servers uh, onboarded to the environment. So uh, based on desired state configuration, uh, you can achieve uh, different uh, goals. For example, you can make sure the configuration compliance uh, are always uh, in place. You can use it for disaster recovery or some application deployment, which is really cool. And uh, I'll show you in the uh, recorded demo in a minute. And also you can use for configuration drift detection to make sure uh, that configuration that you are looking are always uh, placed to the VM that you onboarded. And also you can use it for infrastructure as code. Uh, uh, that part is cool too. So if you want to deploy an environment and uh, you can uh, make sure that those configuration that you want to have uh, are always uh, going to implement or install or uh, basically uh, you, you can have them in, in the new deployment even uh, when you use infrastructure as code. So let's have a look on a recorded demo that I've created for uh, that part. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm in uh, Azure Automation, uh, state, uh, desired state. I have several uh, VMs and uh, I'm going to connect and register this uh, VM. And as you can see, I have several options here, for example, to detect, to monitor or apply the changes. Uh, to uh, a specific VM. I can select refresh frequency uh, to define the agents, to check the configuration. So uh, when I add or connect a VM, so after a while I can see the uh, VM is connected. So inside the gallery, you have this option to use preset uh, script uh, for the state that you are looking for. For example, in this case, I want to install and config uh, IIS server 
and uh, I can use this uh, preset uh, inside the gallery or I can uh, use my own that I have created before. So I need to uh, basically uh, use the code based on uh, PowerShell code and uh, define this configuration uh, for my servers and uh, after that I can use this uh, new configuration or let's say customized configuration for my environment so one thing that you need to know as you can see compiled configuration count is zero, uh, it's zero. so basically uh, uh, it, this code has not compiled yet so you need to compile to be able to use this uh, configuration for your servers so as soon as it's compiled as you can see it's queued for now and it's start, uh, starting to compile and when it's finished the compiled state will be changed to uh, 1 so it means it's already compiled and you can use that uh, configuration for your environment. So it's completed now. And uh, if you check the logs, you can see possible warning errors. You can troubleshoot them to make sure that the code is ready. So uh, the configuration uh, compiled now and in the uh, notes part now i can uh, assign the configuration to a node so i can see the iis uh, which is a configuration file and uh, i just assign it to to the server as you can see uh, status is in pending uh, because it's waiting for agent to make sure that it's available to push that so as you can see the uh, IIS is not uh, installed yet so after a while uh, you can see it's started and it's in progresses uh, the configuration uh, pushed by agent and now it's uh, compliant it means uh, the code and configuration uh, pushed to the server and installed and as you can see, I had a two part, which is related to the .NET version and the IIS. So in the manageable uh, management, so you can see the IIS is installed. So you can use this uh, desired state configuration for different scenario. You can create customized uh, desired state to use for, uh, for your environment. So let's move to uh, another part which is related to update management which is really really cool because this one uh, is that part same as uh, desired estate or azure automation runbook that you can use for both uh, cloud and also non-azure resources so update management uh, I need to mention that one too, that Microsoft recently provided another dashboard for update management that is specifically for update management. You can find it there, but also you can still use Azure Automation uh, account to manage your updates. So update management is, a, is an agent-based update uh, management. So if you want to... Uh, make sure that your servers are always patched and it doesn't matter which version of os it can be uh, linux it can be windows and uh, basically you can push the necessary updates based on your configuration to the server so you can make sure your servers are always up to date based on uh, your policy so if we check which OS are uh, supports in this scenario as you can see uh, in uh, from Windows 2008 R2 to Windows uh, Server 2019 and of course above you can use this uh, update management and also for Linux 2 uh, you can use it for Ubuntu, SUSE, Red Hat, Oracle or CentOS different level uh, different uh, version so it's really good 
and useful scenario. So let's have another uh, look on uh, recorded video here uh, related to the update management that I use. So uh, in, in Azure Automation, as you can see, I already uh, updated a uh, server and I missed some uh, updates here, but let's see what we have uh, when you want to uh, add a new server. So you can basically uh, manage them based on locations. If you uh, already have a server, uh, it's gray out for you, but if you want to add a new server, as you can see, it's a demo, uh, I, I name it demo, so uh, I can select specific subscription, uh, I can get a preview of uh, different resource group, different subscriptions, and I can set uh, that uh, policy to uh, automatically add uh, servers based on some specific parameters look, uh, like based on connection, based on tags and uh, also based on agent. So uh, here uh, I'm trying uh, try to add a new VM. So here uh, I select machines and uh, as you can see, this is the server, and it's uh, one of server that I have in my environment. As I've said before, you can use Azure Arc to use for uh, your environment, on-premise environment. So uh, when you add your server, you can use uh, update classification if you want to exclude or include a specific update for your servers. And uh, you can set up the schedule maintenance uh, to make sure the updates will push on a specific time based on day, week, hours, and so on. Uh, for example, in this scenario, I said uh, for Wednesdays, and uh, also I can set pre script or post scripts to what happened after or before the update. And the maintenance window is 120 minutes, and what will be happen? if uh, we need some report. So you can define different uh, part for your update. And when you add your server, uh, to start installing the agent. And uh, this is the new view, as you can see here, of Update Management Center, which is preview now, and you can use for your uh, update management. You can get a lot of uh, good view here. As you can see in this update management, I push uh, three updates manually to the server to make sure that uh, those updates are going to install and uh, will be available on server. So also you can filter them out here. So you can set, okay, the critical updates only I need to install. So I selected all and next. So you can uh, select a reboot option if it's necessary. You can define a maintenance window here based on minutes and uh, then you can install. One thing is that I need to mention about the maintenance window. So if you have updates that it takes uh, more than the time that you define for maintenance window. So basically uh, it will calculate by Azure and if it takes more uh, time, if it needs more time to install other updates, uh, it will be paused for that moment because it's calculated based on installing, downloading, installing and restart servers. So in the next maintenance window, uh, it will uh, download, install, and update it again. So basically, you can make sure that in maintenance window, you will uh, not face any problem to extending maintenance window uh, minutes. So that's the uh, very cool solution that you can use for your environment. Let's jump to another cool feature here. Uh, which is related to source control. Uh, in source control, in Azure Automation, basically uh, you have this option 
to connect your ROM book to a GitHub or uh, Azure DevOps. So basically you can uh, push your uh, code from uh, your system directly to uh, DevOps or GitHub and based on that connection from your Azure Automation runbook to uh, your repository. So basically you can make sure that you uh, have uh, updated code. You can uh, select two different way like uh, update them manually or uh, update them based on auto sync. So uh, for example, for auto sync, as soon as you push the code, uh, you can make sure that uh, the code will be synced uh, in your environment. It's really cool feature when you want to uh, basically have a complete DevOps uh, for your runbook uh, codes in Azure Automation and it's really useful. Uh, the good things that you need to know when you want to create that connection between your runbook and uh, your repository, you need a path, which is a personal authentication token. So you need to uh, basically provide that or uh, generate that and provide it into your source controller in Azure Automation to make sure that you can use the sync. And uh, you can always monitor uh, some errors or logs or warnings here. Uh, I'll show you a full demo at the end of this uh, uh, slides present presentation. So you can wait until that that I'm going to show you uh, these different parts. So let's wrap it up uh, here about Azure Automation. Now let's talk about uh, the other Azure uh, service, which is Azure Functions. So I use this picture, I created this picture because uh, basically uh, I believe when you use Azure Function, uh, you can be a kind of uh, function man, like Superman, uh, because uh, you have a lot of features here with this service that you can use, as I mentioned, like less code, less infrastructure, less maintain maintenance, and you can keep your focus on your code. So Azure Function is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code why I'm saying less code, because you just need to focus on your actual code, not the other parts. Uh, even sometimes you do not need to focus on, uh, for example, the version, version of .NET, version of uh, uh, PowerShell that you need to keep them updated. So, uh, also, you can maintain less infrastructure because uh, basically that infrastructure will handle by uh, Azure Functions and Azure Environment. And you can save uh, on cost. And uh, I'll tell you why it's important when you use Azure Functions and you can save on cost. Uh, instead of worrying about uh, deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infrastructure uh, provides all the uh, up-to-date resources uh, need to keep your applications running. So uh, that's really cool. So uh, you focus on, on the code that matters uh, most to you, of course. Uh, in most productive uh, more productive language for you, you can use that. And Azure Function uh, functions uh, basically handles the rest part that uh, which is related to infrastructure updates and so on. Uh, as I've said, uh, Azure Function is a serverless uh, computing service provided uh, by Azure and you can uh, help, uh, basically Azure helps you uh, to uh, run tasks on schedule, on uh, like processing data and uh, or even working with uh, Internet of Things IoT and integrating system as we have here as a service for integration and automation. And uh, 
it's 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 really cool it's really flexible and you can use it uh, in different scenarios so the common scenarios that you can use Azure Function apps uh, or Web API, you can create Web API, you can use it for process file uploads, uh, you can create serverless workflow, and for example, you can use for respond to database changes, uh, you can use it for uh, schedule tasks to uh, basically you can run the function apps uh, uh based on two trigger for example time or http uh, which is really good because you can create schedule task or you can use them as a web api as i mentioned before so uh, you can use it for iot data streams and uh, for example you can use it for process data in real time or connect it to uh, sql databases or for read and write uh, you can use different more programming languages here, for example, C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, Java, JavaScript, PowerShell, and Python. Uh, the, the, the thing is that you need to know PowerShell part uh, is not the version 5 point, uh, for example, 1. Uh, it's PowerShell core, so you can use version 7 above. The, the, the latest one, I think, it's 7.2. So the code should be based on uh, PowerShell core. And uh, in some cases that you need to uh, import the module before you use PowerShell. And the reason that I'm talking more about PowerShell because I'm a PowerShell uh, lover. I use uh, PowerShell for many scenarios and I use uh, Azure Functions and PowerShell for many integration and uh, automations. So another cool feature that you will have on uh, Azure Functions, it's uh, Durable Functions. So Durable Functions is an extension of Azure Function that lets you write stateful functions uh, in a serverless compute environment like uh, Azure, exactly Azure Functions. The extension uh, lets you define a stateful workflow by writing uh, orchestrator functions and stateful en uh, entities by, uh, by writing entity uh, functions uh, using the Azure Functions programming model. Uh, behind the scenes, actually, the extension manage state checkpoints and restart, restarts for you, allowing you to focus on your business logic. So uh, I'm not going to explain durable functions uh, because uh, it needs uh, another session to explain that. But if you are not familiar with durable functions, uh, please check the link that I added in this presentation. But you have different way to use uh, durable functions like fan out, fan in, uh, function chaining, aggregator, human interaction, uh, async HTTP APIs, and monitor. So the good things about durable functions, if you are PowerShell lover like me, so that part will. Uh, also uh, the support by uh, durable functions. So uh, you can use the same languages that Azure Functions uh, does support for durable functions. And it's really uh, useful for different scenarios in your environment. So please check durable functions and uh, you will be amazed of the feature that you can use for this uh, kind of scenarios. So. Now I have a question from you. What gives people feeling of power? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question, right? So is it money? Of course it is money. If it's status, maybe, but I think it's ability to innovate with no code. That's true. Of course, it's money is still important, but ability to innovate with no code it means you can save time and you can 
make money based on your time. So it's really important that you not going to spend more time of uh, implementing a solution based on a code. So you can use codeless solution. In this type of scenario, I recommended you to use Azure Logic Apps. So Azure Logic Apps uh, basically helps you to create your automation or integration uh, based on flow. So uh, you do not need to know uh, codes. Uh, I don't know if you are already familiar with uh, Azure, sorry, uh, Microsoft Power Automate and uh, if you ever work with that. So um, Logic Apps, Azure Logic Apps, it's same as uh, same idea as uh, Azure, uh, Microsoft Power Automate. Uh, but uh, there are some differences between them uh, in, in terms of uh, infrastructure, usage, costs, and so on, and also some performance. So basically, in Logic Apps, uh, you can use the designer tool and you can create your flow based on uh, the designer. Uh, also, you have this option to uh, use code too. So if you are familiar with uh, creating flow based on code, you have that option too. And you can use uh, uh, Visual Studio to implement uh, your flow too, which is really cool. And uh, it's, it's perfect when you want to create an automation or an integration uh, as soon as you want to uh, achieve the goal. So uh, the other part is cost effective. So uh, Azure Logic Apps in some scenarios uh, are uh, better in terms of uh, cost and also maintenance cost. So uh, you can make sure the uh, logic apps, the flow or the automation that you are created uh, based on the time or maintenance time that you are spending for that uh, is uh, pretty cheaper than uh, other scenarios, other solutions. So it's, it's, it's really amazing on that part too. The other part is integration with other services. So uh, if you want to use a code-based scenario, so you need to, in some cases, you need to create that kind of connections uh, based on code. But in Azure Logic Apps, uh, basically you can use the connections that already available in Logic Apps. And you can uh, connect your Logic Apps to uh, different Azure resources and also non-Azure resources. You just need to uh, check uh, Azure Logic Apps connection page of Microsoft, or even you can, uh, when, when you are in Logic Apps environment and you are creating the flow of the Logic Apps, you can check what kind of connection, what kind of uh, ready connections you have. So you can connect it to Azure resources or non-Azure resources. Also, you have this option to use Logic Apps on Kubernetes. It's in a preview part, preview. It's a preview feature in Azure. But uh, for this scenario, you need to use Azure Arc uh, enable for Kubernetes. So uh, when, if you want to use Azure, uh, Azure Logic Apps uh, for your integration or for some automation on your on-premise or other cloud Kubernetes, and also you can use it for uh, Azure Kubernetes too, uh, to be able to create that kind of integration, uh, you can use Azure Logic Apps uh, for Kubernetes too. Uh, please check the link that I added here. You can find more information on Microsoft site. So let's have a, a overview, an overview on what we learned till here. And you can uh, see some comparison between two, three different services. 
uh, for Azure Automation, Function Apps, and Logic Apps. So uh, as you can see in this table, I set some uh, pricing part here. I mentioned some pricing part here. Uh, the good things about Azure Automation is uh, you have 500 minutes free per month. So if you don't have long run running scripts, uh, you can use Azure Automation Sandbox and it it's kind of free for you. If you, if you want to automate your IT uh, tasks, for example, for some onboarding, offboarding users, for assigning license, some uh, IT process that you have in your org organization. So you can use Azure Automation in this scenario. For function apps uh, and also logic apps, uh, you have two different plan and consumption and premium. And uh, for logic apps, if you use consumption, so 4,000 actions free included. So uh, also if, if you have some simple flow for logic apps, you can use consumption and consumption is based on your usage. So, and uh, it's, it's not that much uh, in terms of cost. And uh, for premium plan, obviously you will have kind of dedicated server for your environment. And uh, it's, it's kind of same price as you are going to pay for a virtual machine. Uh, for example, about 70 euros per month, kind of uh, around that uh, cost. So in terms of uh, support language, uh, Azure Automation supports PowerShell, Python, and Graphical PowerShell. Uh, you have more features, uh, more options on uh, function apps, uh, different languages. And in logic apps, as I've mentioned, it's graphical interface and it's no code. Uh, so basically you can choose what kind of services you're going to use for your environment. But uh, please note that you can use combination of these services. In some cases, uh, based on my, ex my experience, for example, for logic apps and maybe for Power Automate, uh, it's really hard. I'm not saying it's hard, but it's a bit complicated when it comes to uh, creating loop for uh, different data for example if you want to date check data based on loops or do some uh, actions based on loops it's uh, kind of slow in uh, logic apps and power automate so uh, in some solution in some scenario uh, you can do some actions in logic apps or power automate and since there is connection between logic apps you can create that connection between logic apps and for example azure automation so you can move that loop part to azure automation so uh, first part will be handled in logic apps the second part in azure automation and result of the that loop will be back to logic apps and you can use it for another scenario so you can see uh, what kind of options you have here for different scenarios. So let's jump to another part, which is related to Azure API management. Uh, if I want to uh, briefly explain that for you to get better concept of Azure API management. So if you have uh, different APIs in your environment and you want to centralize them, if you are going to create kind of integration or automation that you need to basically define a kind of front end or let's say a kind of gateway to be connect from the other systems to your actual automation you can use uh, API uh, management. So the API management is a gateway that you can create and you can connect it to different services in, in your environment. And it's pretty flexible. It's pretty uh, uh, perfect 
for your uh, different scenarios that you can use. So uh, as I mentioned here, you can use it for managing uh, different uh, platform APIs. It's pretty secure and reliable in terms of uh, publishing the APIs. And it does work for on-premise, uh, Azure resources, other clouds and uh, other resources. So uh, you can uh, use your API or drives API consumption uh, for your uh, internal teams. Uh, you have admin portal. It's another cool feature that you can have admin portal for uh, basically uh, managing uh, your APIs and you can create developer portal too to have, a, have an environment for your developers. And also you can create segregation between different APIs on uh, Azure API management. Uh, so you have a lot of options here uh, for API management. And uh, the good things about API management is you can basically use that for uh, different uh, preset connections. You can connect it to uh, app connections. You can connect it to logic apps uh, or uh, for example, uh, applications or power to made, you can uh, set different layer of, layer of security uh, or you can connect it to uh, a service fabric. So uh, basically it's very useful uh, solutions for different scenario. Uh, so right now uh, I'm going to have a demo uh, for you. Uh, we learned about uh, Azure Automation, Function Apps, Logic Apps and API Management. So I was thinking why we shouldn't have a demo that uh, combination all of these resources together. So in this scenario, uh, we have a full automation to creating users uh, in uh, in your environment. So as you can see here, we have a server in your in my, uh, our in my on-premise environment, and uh, we attached this server to Azure based on Azure Arc enabled server, and uh, Azure Automation is connected to this server based on agent. And I have API management, I have function apps, which is responsible uh, to create user in uh, Entra or Azure Active Directory. So we have two parts here. So user will send requests to Microsoft Teams uh, based on a keyword uh, or some keywords and a logic apps behind that will detect the keywords and send the request to API management. And API management is responsible to uh, call other APIs in uh, different uh, services. For example, if it's an online user that we are going to create, it will send requests to function apps to create the account in Azure and for local users in a specific server. And you can imagine that this server is a kind of server that uh, has Active Directory, local Active Directory, and this server shouldn't have, have any connection to uh, outside of on-premise environment. So we need to make sure that no one has access to this server, but also we need to use some automation on, on this server. And in some cases, we need to create users both, both uh, in uh, Azure Active Directory and also all local Active Directory. And we don't have any sync between these two directories. So 
When a user requests to Microsoft Teams, uh, the trigger will be a start and the request to API management. If it's local user, Azure Automation and Arc are responsible to create user in uh, on-premise server Active Directory and the function apps is re responsible for creating user in uh, Azure Active, Direct Active Directory. So let's have a look on the solution that I have created here and uh, let's learn uh, about this test scenario. So now we are in Azure portal and uh, as I said before, I have an API management here, which is responsible to send requests to uh, different uh, services. So as you can see, I can get a lot of information here. I can use different features like uh, creating different connections and so on. And uh, I can create different workspace for different teams. So here in API management, I have this uh, test Azure user management, and I have some post and get for different uh, part of the uh, connection. For example, for this post, uh, as you can see, it's connected to function app and I have another one uh, for connected to uh, logic apps, which is here, I call it uh, local users. So uh, I have connected this uh, part of back, uh, basically this backend of this uh, operation is uh, a logic apps. So if I want to show you, as you can see, I have two logic apps here, both are on consumptions met, uh, model. So uh, this flow, if I go to designer, is uh, related to uh, the Microsoft Teams working with uh, the, uh, the specific keywords. I define two scopes to uh, send requests to different uh, API management backend. So uh, you can use uh, HTTP requests or you can use direct API uh, management call here. I use API, uh, HTTP requests. Also, I have another logic apps, which is related to uh, trigger the action for uh, Azure uh, automation accounts. And as you can see, I have a connection to uh, my Azure uh, automation from logic apps. As I've said, you have this uh, pre-connection that you can use for your logic app, sorry, automation account. So uh, I have an uh, HTTP request from the beginning and uh, a response that uh, means the request will be sent to uh, Azure automation, will be uh, wait for the answer and answer will send back to API management. Also, if I go to function app, I have a function here based on PowerShell. So this one is responsible uh, to create uh, accounts in uh, Azure, uh, which is really important. So uh, that's it for function. Also, if I go to automation account, so first let me show you source control. The source control is connected to my uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, I have different sync here that I've done with incremental or full. For example, uh, here I had a failed, which is related to uh, the contributor access for managed identity uh, on Azure. So if you want to uh, do this connection for your source controller. Don't forget to use manage identity for your uh, source controller. Uh, if I go to runbook, I have one runbook here and you can uh, check the last recent uh, jobs that uh, was successful or failed or with uh, suspended option. Uh, you have the, uh, a lot of options here to check uh, the recent jobs. So 
if I check the code, I can get some information here. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't have any uh, specific code here. Uh, or uh, let's say uh, credential here because this code, uh, this part new AD user will run on uh, my actual server or let's say local server, local AD server uh, with high privilege access. So you do not need to store some credential for this specific uh, scenario. Also, if I back here, I have hybrid worker group that is related to the server that uh, actually I have onboarded or attached that uh, based on Azure Arc. So as you can see, it's uh, extension based. And if I check, I can get some information about that. So uh, basically I attach this server to my environment uh, to use that uh, as a actual resource for my scenario. So let's start a test. And uh, if I go to my Microsoft Teams, I can start a new conversation. Like uh, I have a new account. So as soon as I post this message, I will receive this uh, adaptive card here. For example, I can set name and let's say Azure back to a school or let's say Azure demo. Why not? So job title, we can say here Azure back to a school team member. So here uh, I, I created this adaptive card for some different scenario. For example, you can set condition for your uh, scenario. For example, if I check here, it means uh, only go through the creating user uh, in Azure Active Directory, or you can use full or both. So basically it's really depends on you uh, for different scenario, but you can handle this part of your uh, adaptive card in your logic apps or your Power Automate. I'm not going to explain this part. It's uh, part of the uh, different session. So if I submit here, it says, thank you for your uh, response. Online user created. So why it's so fast? Because it uses uh, Azure functions here and it's pretty fast. But why is speed, uh, a bit slow uh, for the local user? Uh, I mentioned in beginning of the session that uh, when you have Azure Arc enabled server attached to your server, uh, sorry, uh, you attach the server to the cloud. So basically it takes time to load and uh, send the actual script uh, to your server. That is why it's a bit slow. So if I go to Azure Active Directory here and check the users. So I have the Azure demo here, as you can see, and also the server that I have access here this is my, uh, actually this, the, the local AD. So Azure demo. So basically you can uh, do different, uh, method or you can use the, uh, these services for different scenarios in your environment. And, uh, it's pretty cool. So just, Let's 
check this part, for example, for Azure Automation, I can see the last run here. As you can see, I get some parameters here. I got uh, an output. You can create different output here. And if you have you face some problem, you can see some errors here. And also in logic apps, local manage, for example, I can see the latest run. And I can see if there is any problem in any steps. So that was the demo and hope you learned about uh, different resources or services for uh, automation and integration in this demo. So let's uh, have a look on the last slide here. So for the last slide, I'll, I want to give you some uh, security advice when you use automation or integration on uh, different resources or if you have a plan to use different services for your uh, automation and integration in Azure. So uh, make sure that you always assign least privilege to work uh, to get work done. For example, in some cases, maybe you want to use identity management and uh, management identity sorry and for management identity uh, you do not need always to assign subscription level access so you have to uh, use list privilege and also for the other uh, part of your uh, environment use role-based access to set access to different uh, resources uh, please limit number of high privilege roles to your uh, environment use Identity Manager, uh, it's really good. Microsoft recently deprecated the, uh, the old way called uh, run as account. So you can use uh, only Identity Manager right now. Uh, don't save secure credential connection or secure variable in the code. Uh, it's like you lock your car and left the key middle of East Street. So it's it's not a good solution to your you store the data like uh, secure connection and variables uh, into your code. Uh, use private endpoint as much as you can to make sure that all traffic goes through uh, Azure, not uh, public endpoints. Uh, I added uh, policy definitions for automations uh, in these uh, slides. Please check that uh, URL and uh, check the policy de uh, definitions, uh, different policy definitions for automations. Uh, it's really useful. Uh, restrict access by IP for uh, different services. That's really useful. And also uh, secure data in uh, run history uh, for your output and input for a logic apps designer. Sometimes maybe you forgot to uh, do that steps. You can uh, check Microsoft documentations to how you can do that to hide history and some uh, secure variable in your logic apps. So make sure that you are going to create a reliable and secure automation and integration. Uh, hope you enjoyed and learned uh, about automation and integration based on four favorite uh, Azure services. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, you can combine these services together to achieve your goal or even you can use only one. Uh, it's always related to scenario that you are going to implement or it's related to how much you want to uh, uh, spend your time or how much costs uh, is important for your scenario. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this session and also thank you to uh, uh, Azure Back to a School uh, organizer and they organized this uh, recorded session and also online sessions. Uh, hope you learned uh, from the other sessions too. 
and please don't forget to follow and subscribe Azure Back to School uh, YouTube page. You can learn uh, a lot from the other expertise uh, that they are uh, provided some recorded sessions or uh, online sessions. Hope you enjoy and uh, yeah, take care and see you soon. Bye.